Peace. What up, y'all? What up, YouTube? What up, Facebook? What up, Instagram? What up, all the people in social media land? It's Tata Nazako. I want to talk to y'all today about the Paloma Yombe Spirit Mama Chola and love spells with Paloma Yombe Spirit Mama Chola. I have been coming across a lot of information which has been enlightening me to the origin of a lot of things. The origin of a lot of things, Paulo, as well as um, its connection to Africa. It's given me a really different perspective about why the Cuban culture identifies with Paulo Santeria Lukumi in such a way that it does where it, in, it, it, it invokes ownership of that particular tradition as if, oh, it's not about Africa so much as it is about Cuba. I think Cuba is a very beautiful place. All the people that I've met from Cuba are very beautiful people. Um, and I understand why they were able to say, look, this is ours. Paulo, Santeria, Lukumi, this is ours. I'm understanding why they're able to say that now. Because I'm understanding that many of the Enkisi or the Mpungo, which have been created in Cuba, don't really have a direct lineage to an Enkisi in the Congo, in the African Congo. I explained this in the blog on my website that is associated with this particular video. You can click the link in the description of this video and take you over to the article where I actually go into detail about the origins, particularly of the spirit Mama Chola. Okay. In this particular article, I explain how in the Criollo Afro-Cuban practice of Palo Monte, Mayombe, the Enkisi is created from the lineage or the shadow of its previous of its predecessor. Meaning that if your godfather If you receive the Mama Chola Wenge from your godfather, then your godfather would give birth to that Mama Chola Wenge from his Mama Chola Wenge, the shadow of that Mama Chola Wenge, and so forth. And then your, if you grew um, in the tradition and became, you know, a, a a godfather, if you will, then you would create a Mama Chola for your godchildren based on the shadow of the Mama Chola that you have received. The issue with that is that we found that the Mama Chola Wenge that was created in Cuba, the Enkisi that was created in Cuba, although it is based on the same spiritual principles and the occult principles as the Enkisi in Africa, it's not the same energy and it does not come from the same lineage of energy uh, from the African Congo Enkisi, uh, Chola Ngingwe. Okay. <clears throat> Chola Ngingwe or Ngingwa is a energy that was particularly identified with love. Okay. Zola coming from the root word Zola or Chola coming from Zola. But this particular Nkisi, and as you can see on the website, you will see the picture of the Nkisi. And Nkisi in Congo, Africa is actually a statue which is created out of wood carved by an Nganga, which was the name of the original priest in the Congo. Carved by an Nganga, a priest, okay, who would prescribe this particular belongo, this particular spiritual medicine to a client, okay, in order to uh, remedy a specific situation, a specific situation. This is not a universal in Kisi that everybody comes through, throws their wishes and petitions and ebbles and offerings to for all things related to Mama Chola Wenge. This is not the type of in Kisi that was created 
in the Congo. Okay? So there is no universal chola in Gengwe in the Congo with, which ties its lineage to the Mama Chola Wenge of African Criollo or, or, or Criollo Afro Cuban uh, Palomanti, Mayumbe. There is no lineage, there's no connection. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why we began to see, and I began to notice, even in my own personal practice, I began to realize a lot of people say, oh no, that's not that, that's not that. But it is that. And it, it, it got confirmed for me when I was, I got a reading from a Babalao, maybe like the beginning of last year. And the reading from the Babalao, the Babalao, in the middle of the reading, he said that Oshun and Obatala had come through. And Ifa says that I needed to make an offering to Oshun. I said, I said, Baba, I'm not a Norisha priest. I do not have um, the, 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 the Orisha Oshun. I don't have that Orisha to be able to make the Ebo to her for what he said that I needed to give her. I said, but I do have the Prenda, I do have the Nganga of uh, the Palo Mayombe spirit, Mama Chola Wenge. I said, can you ask Ifa if it is acceptable for me to give the Ebo to Mama Chola Wenge instead. He consults with Ifa. Ifa says yes. I gave the offering to Mama Chola Wenge. Everything was fine. So what that showed me was that there is definitely some correlation and there is some spiritual correlation. Fuck what everybody talking about out of their mouth. What is the spirit saying? The spirit received. How is it that Oshun was able to be appeased by me giving Mama Chola an offering. This is because the Enkisi that was created in Criollo, Afro-Cuban, Palo Monte Mayombe was a creation of Cuba. It was a creation of Cuba. And it does not take away from the validity. It does not take away from the power. It does not take away from the respect. It does not take away from anything of the Palo Mayombe practice. But we have to point out that this particular Nkisi, this particular energy was created there. And it was created from the energies in the city. It was created from a combination of other traditions. Obviously, Lukumi. Obviously, the Yoruba tradition, where we were able to syncretize certain attributes from Oshun into the localized Criollo and Kisi, known as Mama Chola Wenge. Okay? This is through my research. This is through what I have come across. This is through what I have seen. And I have experienced in my own practice. The syncretization and the connection between Mama Chola and Oshun. So I look at the Mama Chola that we work with in Criollo Palomanti as it is taught in Afro-Cuba. As, in a, as a created in Kisi, which makes it universal for all of the things that are also associated with Oshun. How is it that we go to Oshun for love? We can go to Oshun for money, but we can also go to Mama Chola for love, and we can also go to Mama Chola for money. How is it that Oshun likes honey, but then also Mama Chola likes honey? How is it that Mama... You see what I'm saying? How is it that they like these same attributes if they're not the same in any type of way? How, how is it that they like these same offerings if they're not the same in any type of way. So I started to see the connection between it. Does not take away from the practice of Palo Mayombe. Does not take away from the power of Mama Chola, the respect for Mama Chola as it was created in the Criollo, Afro-Cuban culture. But we have to say that the origin, and if that's the case with Mama Chola, we also have to say that that, that is also the case with many of the Enkisi which we work with here today in Afro-Cuban Palo Monte Mayombe. This is the exact same principle being, the syncretization principle being played out. Okay? I'm sure we can see the same correlation between Zarabanda and Ogun. Okay? If we do our research and we look for the origins of Zarabanda and Kikongo or African Congo, 
I'm sure that we can see that there is no direct lineage of energy linking back to an original Nkisi in the African Congo for the spirits that are bound. And this is why we can see so many attributes associated with Zerabanda, also associated with Ogun. So much so that some people will say Zerabanda Ogun. Okay? That when they mention Zerabanda, they will say Zerabanda Ogun. They already associated Zerabanda with the attributes of Ogun. Nothing wrong with this. It's just a different way that the Afro-Cubans um, were able to take the principles from Africa from the Congo, the same principle that went in, the same principles that went into creating an Nkisi are the same in Africa, the statue, the wooden statue, are the same principles that make an Nganga work in Afro-Cuba. It's the same thing. The same way you make the statue work in the Congo is the same way you make the Nganga work in Afro-Cuba. So the mysteries that were shared from the African continent to Cuba are the same. It is just that the way that the mysteries were used once they got to Cuba differed based on what they had to deal with in the location where they were, based on the situation that they were in, slavery, based on the fact that they were not able to get access to certain things that are in the Congo. If I were building these statues for my clients or patients or what have you in the Congo based on certain herbs and trees and things that were only indigenous to that part of the world and how in the hell when I got to Africa, I mean, got to Cuba as a slave, was I able to still get access to those ingredients in order to recreate the same thing? So we say, oh, Palo Mayombe, it is from the Congo, it is popularized and it is localized in Afro-Cuban culture. But nothing in Afro-Cuban culture, nothing in the Kikongo grows in Afro-Cuban culture. So clearly they had to adopt to what they had in the area in order to recreate, use the same spiritual principles and technology to recreate this energy in its localized version. Nothing wrong with that because they're still using the universal principles in order to do this. They're still using these spiritual principles which came from Africa in order to be able to recreate this Criollo and Kisi here in Afro-Cuba. You see? So as we get into working with Mama Chola for love spells, we begin to associate her more closely with the Orisha Oshun and we approach her almost as if she is the Orisha Oshun, but yet she has many different attributes that are, you know, distinct her to the Palo Mayombe religion. There are certain things about Mama Chola that are different from Oshun. Oshun will represent sweet love. Mama Chola will represent tough love. You see? Usually when Mama Chola gives you what you want in a love spell, it comes with a lesson to be learned. If your intentions are not pure in what it is that you desire and want, she's going to teach you a lesson. I have learned this firsthand experience and I've seen other people do it as well. She's going to teach you a lesson. So I can clearly see the distinction between Oshun and Mama Chola, but I can also see the similarities between the two as well. Okay. So. In working with Mama Chola to get what we want in love, we definitely have to approach her with pure intentions. We do not want her to get on. We do not want to get on her bad side. Okay? We don't want to piss her off. Definitely don't want to piss her off. Um, but the way that the the way that the, the spirit works in Paulo Mayombe versus the way that the spirit works in in in, 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 in Orisha is different. And it is different because the energy, the Nkisi, which is created in Palo, is the combination of a non-corporal energy, the Mpungo, and then the also once corporal energy, the Mfumbe, which is the dead, the muerto. Okay? These two brought together in a pack through ritual created in Nkisi. Okay? So... It causes the situation, it causes Mama Chola to be able to operate and to behave in a different way. 
okay? The Infumbe, of course, can relate and can identify with um, more, more relate to the, 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 the whims of the human being as they exist in a physical body and as they are, uh, it can more identify with your desires here and now, okay? Can identify with your vices, can identify with certain things that a goddess, Oshun, would have to come down and, and have a different perspective, a view of, whereas the Nkisi, who's part dead person, or shall I say part human, okay, who's part human, can actually identify with what you're going through, why you want this person, why you want that, you see. So I always tell people when I'm doing these works with people, people always asking me, what do I need to do? Sit the fuck down. Turn the fucking phone off. Stop talking to the person if you do not know what to say. They fuck up these works all the time. And I've seen it not just with myself, but I've also seen it with other spiritual workers. The client will give the spiritual worker a bad name or try to ruin their reputation over some shit they did. And they don't never want to take the blame. It can be anything from the simple, and I always tell them, sit the fuck down. Let the spirit work. You know what these people do? They go stalk social medias. They want to keep in contact. They want to keep doing it. They don't give the spirit a chance to fucking work on the person. They never do. They never give this. Some people do. Some people, I'm not going to say they never do. But some people do. Some people chill. They fall back. And then they see shit working. Other people... Some people be so fucking gone with their shit. They can't let it go. You know what I mean? After you pay me to do some work, go get you a glass of wine. If you smoke weed, go get you a, a go get you a blunt or something. Go sit down and fucking relax. Take your mind off of it. Go out. Don't even think about that. Go out to the bar. Go, go do something that ain't got shit to do with this related to this person. Get your mind off of it. Because when y'all keep y'all minds on this shit, y'all fuck up the work every time. Every time. Then I got to go back and give other offerings to Chola and do this. And I got to work with this spirit and that. I got to do all this extra shit. Because people don't listen. One of the reasons why I need to start charging more. Because when I come back and say, oh, we got to give another offering to this. Or we got to do this because you fucked that up. When you did that, when you said this, you took, the, you changed the whole energy of what the fuck we were doing. You've alerted this person. You brought them to attention. You know what I'm saying? Now they're not under the full influence of what we sent out. Now I got to keep sending the spirit out at this person in order to, to get the result. And I got other shit to do. I got other clients to work with. I got consultations to do for people. I got to answer questions. I got to go on my website. I got to answer questions to my students. I have other things to do. So I can't just keep working for you for free. Now I'm at this point where I got to keep charging you, which I don't like to do. So I'm about to get, go back to my old program of charging one flat fee for everything and include everything that you want in that one flat fee. Everything that you want that's going to cover all the times that you fuck up when you fuck up the work, now I got the money retainer to fucking put that offering in there because y'all be fucking up when it comes to these love spells. I'm telling you, I will do a work for a client. They just don't, some of, some of the guys, they just don't know how to talk to women. They just don't know how to talk to women. That's really what the fuck it come down to. They just don't know how to talk to women. You know what I mean? They have this mentality. They have this attitude about the way that they talk to women. And it fucks up the work every time. Because I don't give a fuck what kind of spirit you got on you. You say the wrong shit to a female. And they're going to be like, what? Like, what the fuck you say? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not down for that. Or I'm not doing this. Or I'm not doing that. Or I don't want to hear this. Or I don't want to hear that. If a person is I always said, if a person is an asshole. And a person 
is just clearly, if a female is just clearly acting like a bitch, it's not much you can do if that's who they are. They're showing you who they are. Now, you may be able to sweeten them up, but it's going to also take you some boot licking. You can't motherfucking do a spell on somebody and then start and be argumentative with them and then already confrontational and think that it's going to work. But I thought we I thought we did a work. I thought we did an offering to make her sweet. But nigga, you can't go and fucking argue with her. <laughs> who the fuck that? I mean, come on now. This is the kind of shit that we deal with. And people ask me, how long do these works take to manifest? These works will take anywhere from 24 hours to sometimes 12 months. Dead ass serious. Depends upon how much you want the situation. This can be determined during the consultation though. So during the consultation, you can be like, okay, how long is it gonna take for this to work? And if I say, okay, well, if you do exactly as I fucking say, if you do exactly as I say, it will happen. The spirit says it will happen within this length of time. But if you start tinkering around with shit, stalking, going on Facebooks, sending me screenshots, look what she said on this one. Look what she said on this one. I don't want to see that shit. I don't care what she posted on social media. I'm not obsessed with what she posted on social media. You're obsessed with what she posted on social media. I keep telling y'all clients, social media is not real. Stop thinking because a person acting like they happy on social media, they really happy because a lot of them people ain't happy. Especially if you know that behind the scenes they got shit going on. They ain't fucking happy. Some days I post shit. You know what I mean? I may post some motivational things on my pages or whatever. And it may be because I'm having a bad day. You never fucking know. We are all human beings. We all have bad days. Any motherfucking priest or priestess out here acting like their life is just pure fucking heaven on earth is a fucking lie because that's not life. And if them niggas is living like that, then they don't need to be on YouTube selling you spells and shit. Them niggas need to be somewhere, goddamn it, with some money and some hedge fund some damn well. They don't need to be on goddamn on fucking YouTube trying to sell you fucking spells. Nobody's fucking life is perfect. Nobody. Don't fucking believe it. Okay? So, you got to understand that. You cannot be stalking these people on social media. You cannot stalk your target. The best thing to do is do the work. Set that shit and forget that shit. After I show you the work has been done, leave it the fuck alone. Go do something else with your life. And I promise you it will manifest. I promise you, every time a client, I have done work for a client and they have left the shit alone, they get back with the person and then don't even fucking tell me. I got to tell them. I got to message them. Be like, yo, I ain't heard from you in a couple months, man. How's everything going? Oh, yeah, we got back together. Well, damn, you could have told me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all got to quit being obsessed with your target. Go do some other shit. The more you do that, the faster it's going to manifest, I promise you. The faster it's going to manifest. If you keep harassing and playing around and shit like that, I don't want to keep going back to the spirit, putting work on top of work on top of work because you keep fucking up. Just do what I instruct you to do. People be like, oh, is that you're saying it or is that the spirit saying it? If I'm saying it to you, it's the spirit saying it. The Tata Nganga is a medium between this world and the next. The dead are all around me all day, 24 hours a day. They ain't never not with me. In the car, at the restaurant, wherever I'm at. Now, I may not feel like focusing in and tuning in at the moment that you're messaging me and calling me. And I like to go back to a setting, to a temple setting where I can sit down, relax, clear my mind, focus on what it is you want me to do. But they all around me. If I send you a text message... Like, boom, do this, do that. Do that shit. Because if it go wrong, you can always blame me at that point. Well, shit, Tata, you told me to fucking do this. I did it, and this is what happened. But every time my clients do what I tell them to do, I be like, type this and say I Sometimes I will text the shit to the client. I be like, say it. I say, text, copy and paste this right here, what I'm sending you, and send it to your girl. 
and they get a positive result every time. Because the spirit telling me what they need to say, but then it takes 20 minutes to get them to understand what I'm trying to get them to say. So I just type the shit out and be like, yo, text this to your girl. And eventually she comes back around. But then they always go back and say stupid shit. Oh man, she put me on block again. Okay, what did you say? Oh, I just asked her about, you know, what, what are we going to do about this? I'd be like, man, what the fuck, man? Some of them just don't know how to talk to women. I'm just being raw with y'all, man. I'm not finna sit on this motherfucker and act like I'm some holy-ass dude. I'm a brujo. Shit. I ain't no fucking holy-ass dude. You know what I mean? I'm a good dude. I'm a righteous dude. I walk in a way of righteousness. I ain't out here looking to fuck nobody over. But I'm not, I'm not gonna sit up in this motherfucker and sugarcoat shit to you. I'm not finna do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna do that. Y'all gotta start. Y'all, when it comes to these, these spells, especially with Mama Chola, y'all got to pay attention and follow instructions. Y'all got to pay attention and follow instructions. You, you do not want this in Kisi on your bad side. She is not easily one to forgive you. And I don't want her on my bad. I don't want to be on her bad side because I'm doing some shit for you. You know what I mean? Like, seriously. Y'all got to give shit time to work. Y'all so damn impatient. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I put works, I put works in Ianganga and forgot about them. Came back four months later. The person coming all around, you know, and I'm thinking like, damn, why is the person coming around here? Oh yeah, damn, I did put that work in there four months ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's the kind of shit. I I don't sweat it. I'm not finna be all up on it like that. You know what I mean? But you know, I, this is really what I just wanted to say about, you know, about, about Mama Chola, about working with these, about working with the, um, about doing spiritual work with Mama Chola, about getting love work with Mama Chola. I mean, like, anytime that you get this type of work done, know that it can have it, manif it can manifest immediately. It can manifest in days. It can take a couple weeks. It can take a couple months. It all depends upon your situation. Every situation is not the same. So although you may see me posting testimonials, you know what I'm saying? About situations that are going good for one person. It don't necessarily mean it's going to happen that quickly for you. Because your situation is different. There's a lot of different karma. A lot of different things that need to be worked out in each individual situation. Okay? So understand that. If you want more about, if you want to learn more about how long something is going to take, make sure you bring that up in the consultation. So how long is this work going to take to manifest? And then at that point, I can divine to find out and give you an idea of how long the work is going to take. How long the work going to take. At that point, once you got the time and you agree, okay, boom, I want to do this. Let it be. People are like, well, what else do I need to do? Nothing. I'm doing all the You just paid me to do all the work. What the fuck? If it was something you could do, then you wouldn't need me. So let me do the work, fall back, and go do something else with your life. Check back with me every 21 days. That's all you got to do. I'm right here. Number been the same for years. I ain't going nowhere. Even if I do go somewhere, you got, you got my number. I ain't never turned the number off. 708-480-2712. Same number for years. You know what I mean? Just don't text me on no bullshit acting all creepy and mysterious and shit. If you want some work, if you want to talk to me on a serious level... Text me, say your name, state your business, what it is you want, and let's get down to work. I don't have time to be playing, oh, you know, you know. I, can you answer these questions for me from a phone number that i never seen before? I'm going to literally ignore you. So don't even fucking play, waste my time like that. If you heard my number on this video, you want to you send me a text message, by all means, send me a text message. Do not call me thinking you're going to get a free consultation on the phone. Go to my website, click the link in the description, book a consultation, and I will give you the most thorough, most accurate reading that you're going to find on this internet. Bottom fucking line. When it comes to what's going on here and right now in your spiritual life, I am the person that you need to fuck with. I'm the person you need to fuck with. You need to click the link in the description of this video. You need to book a consultation. You need to get answers today. You ain't got to get no spiritual work from me. You can go to Joe Blow. You can go to this one and that one. But I guarantee you, when you get through with my consultation, you're going to know what the fuck going on in your situation. 
I guarantee you. And I'm going to prove to you who the hell I am and what it is that I know how to do. So, hey, I appreciate y'all for watching. Definitely click the link in this video to, 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 to read the article. Um, the article is very informative. It's going to be a little controversial, but... You know, it is what it is. I have respect for all of the tradition and all of the culture all the way across the board. So click the link in the description. Definitely follow me on Facebook because I'm finna start going live on Facebook in the mornings. I'm finna go live on Facebook in the afternoons and I'm finna go live on Facebook in the evenings. Also follow me on Instagram, okay? Because we're gonna do special shit. I'll be posting up, you know what I'm saying, tips, techniques, things that you could do um, in video memes on Instagram which will also be shared and posted to my um, Facebook, okay? So, all around, go to my website, subscribe to my blogs, make sure that you are following the website, make sure you follow me on the social media. If you have any questions, click the link below that says contact. Send me a, um, a question in my contact form. I will be happy to answer it. Please don't send me no of them full page story about your life. Just get down to the, you know, the nitty gritty of what's going on. And I will be happy to respond to you in a timely manner. The best way to get in contact with me is to book a consultation. Click on the link below. That says tatanazako.com forward slash services. And book a consultation with me. Set your time. We will talk at that time. And we will do the work that needs to be done. I want to appreciate y'all for watching this video. Definitely like and subscribe to my channel. Share this video for all of those people that need to, you know, understand where they when they people that worship in chola and people that's out there you know doing anything with chola to get a better understanding of what it is that they're dealing with i didn't go into this i didn't go in this video as much as i wanted to about about the actual love spells themselves because the way that i've been doing things lately is a, a is a lot different than the way that i've done things in the past i don't want to give away any of the secrets that have been handed down to me from el elders about how to do things more efficiently, more stronger, and more better. So I'm not really getting into, you know, how we do things. A lot of my clients get a chance to see how I work and how I operate once they purchase work from me. Once they get a spiritual work done from me, then they actually see how I work because I share some of that information with them because I'm allowing them to peek into my temple so that they can see exactly what their work is, what, what's going into their work. They see the ceremonies being done. They see the sacrifices being done. They see everything that I do, they see. But certain things I don't explain. I don't explain what ingredients I'm using. I don't explain what certain things are simply because they're secrets of our house and they're secrets of our lineage and they're secrets that are handed down from the elders that are working with me and that are guiding me as well. So definitely, definitely, definitely click the link below. Go over to the website and view the article. You're going to be blown away by some of the information in that article. If, like I said, if you have any questions, I mean no disrespect to anyone. This is just research that I've been getting um, from various elders, from the elders of my, my home, Monanzo, um, various elders who have been communicating with me, and we've just been trying to you know, put all the pieces together. I have respect for the whole thing, so it doesn't matter to me if it was created in Cuba, if it was come from Africa, as long as it's built and created based on the same spiritual principles, it doesn't matter to me. And I can clearly see that the same in in Kisi statue that was created in Africa is made the exact same way in principle as the Nganga or the African Cuban Criollo Palo Monte Mayombe. Okay, so uh, I guess I'll see y'all on the next video. Appreciate y'all for watching. Like and subscribe. All right, peace.